Hey guys, welcome back to Seller Sessions versus Awesomers.com with my co-host Steve Simonson. Today we're going to talk about systems, but first Steve, I'll share to the groups and can you give everyone a little bit of background on yourself? Sure. Well, first of all, I know that we call it Awesomers versus Seller Sessions, but we're really, we're working together over here. Oh yeah, of course. Uh, yeah, 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 it's, yeah. Uh, you know, we're it's a friendly rivalry. No, honestly, yeah. um, my background, everybody, is I'm an old e-commerce guy. I've been doing business for a long, long time. And I can say that systems have been a key foundation and something that helped us scale our businesses. And so we're going to talk about systems today. We're going to talk a little bit about why systems are important, my systemic philosophy, and how you can kind of replicate some of that philosophy. So it's a very good foundational uh, type of discussion. And Danny is always uh, very good at kind of shepherding these discussions and getting to the meat and the substance of it. Um, and I have a nice calming background for you. I'm in a bamboo forest. There's nothing to worry about. It's just systems. Everybody loves systems. So don't worry. It's going to be fun and informative. Excellent. So should we put some context? Do you have the, do you want to share it to your screen? Do you add that um, JPEG to start with? Yeah, and sure, then, sure. And we can then go, we'll do a quick overview so people understand what it is. And then we can go step by step what these systems are. Let me click on a screen and see if I could share this here with you. So share screen. Because it does, in fact, help to kind of understand what we're yeah. talking about. So yeah. we're going to look at an application window and we're going to. So I'm, I'm not going to go into presentation mode here, everybody. I'm just going to yeah. show you. Um, the system design process. So what what works is having a system to create systems. And that's that's ultimately what we're talking about here. And I want everybody to think about your business from a systemic mindset. Mm -hmm. uh, Danny, is there, I mean, although none of us are perfect, myself included, at having systems and everything, yeah. I bet you that your best companies, your best success and profits are, have you have systems in those companies. Am I right? Yeah. yeah. Without a doubt. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, sorry, go on. No, I'm just going to say the, the, you put systems in because you expected some result uh, as a, you know, as the outcome you wanted. Is that fair to say? Yeah. And you take all the learnings from your previous businesses. Like one of the, especially on the agency side, I took, when we built the agency, uh, we had the technical team and then I'm building out the back end of the business and I, I basically thought I want to build a business taking all the pain points of all the other service-based businesses that I didn't like and I'm like okay I've got a tr an opportunity here to design that and take 10 years of business experience from these businesses why even down to um, not having a credit control department right having everything automated in certain quarters and stuff like that doing away with certain things that didn't work in other businesses that can be automated so we were very keen at the very beginning whilst ellis was developing the architecture the technology and stuff i was designing the actual business and what we wanted to see for the future i love so, it that's so really for the, smart for the benefit of the the guys listening on our joint podcast i just want to quickly go through what these are like because no one can see the screen it says name it result statement design benchmarks accountability Document system, establish standards, required resources, and design systems measurements. It's obviously because these guys won't be able to see it on the screen. Okay, but what sorry. we're going to do is we'll break this down for everyone, including those who hear us on the replay of the podcast. So now we've got an understanding with this. Let's bring you back into the screen, Steve. And Very then well. let's start with why, like we kind of, you've asked me a couple of questions now, but Let's get to the why of a system is important and why it's important to name it. All right. So the, the first thing to understand is the name itself is, is not just a, a flowery, you know, let's call this the, you know, money collection system. There, there, you want to have a structure. Yeah. And so before you kind of name stuff, you need to define your system's architecture. Mm -hmm. Now that immediately people's pulse you know, gets, they start racing. They're like, uh Oh, yeah. I don't know anything about this. But if you guys think back to the, the organizational chart, um, the functional organizational chart we shared a couple of weeks ago, mm. that is essentially your systems architecture, yeah. right? You, you have a, a department, you have a finance department, a business development department or marketing 
um, IT, whatever the case is. And so you want to start with naming based on what you are uh, trying to design. So if it's a finance system, maybe you just start with, you know, FIN dash blank, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Finance slash general ledger, finance slash, you know, accounts receivable. Mm -hmm. And and you want to think about those names because it is so important as you think in the future, how people will read these, right? It's not how you will read it when you're writing it or when you're leading the development of these things, because mm -hmm. everybody knows everything when you're writing it down. It's yeah. how will somebody look at it when it's a year from now and having very clear things like you might say, you know, business development is, you know, biz dev or BI or BD, you know, dash blank, you know, and, and maybe even put numbers to it. My whole point is naming the thing is the beginning of creating a hierarchical, hierarchical, is that a yeah. word? Catalog. Yes. And, okay. and I only say it because we often think about this at the end and then we're looking in our folders or we're looking wherever we're storing this documentation and it's impossible to read. And so we are really good uh, at looking like we can look for a SKU number and we can find any document, any kind of photo, video, anything related to that SKU because we always use the same naming conventions. Mm -hmm. So I really want people to to take note of this and, and bring it to heart. And certainly, if you're online, have questions. Uh, why don't you give some shout-outs there? Uh, yeah, so hey. just coming into the feed, we've got George's, George's back. Hey, George. Elchin's back here as well. He says, hi, gents. Good to see you. Eric Payne is here. Hello, Eric. And Elise is back. Abigail is here. Steve, what was the funky backgrounds that you were using for your design, she was asking? Uh, oh just, yeah, I just find uh, fun photos and and I put them on my green screen back here. Excellent. Uh, uh, so Giselle's joined us. Juan is here. He also says, "Hey, Danny McMillan, good to see you again, mate. Thanks as always." Uh, and Michael Schneider is here, a Sing Ting as well. Welcome back, guys. Uh, Mark Steer has just joined the call. Anyone who got questions, that's fine. We can answer them there. The other thing I just want to quickly say is that oh, hello. Owen's here. He's back again. Thank you, Owen. Do you know, Owen, it's nearly 50. Next Thursday, I think it is. Thursday or Friday, it's going to be 50 shows in a row. So we have to do some sort of uh, uh, celebrational party there, Stephen. You'll have to come and join wow. us as well. Did you say so, what day is it next week? I think it, I've got to do the, the proper count up, but I think it's either Thursday or Friday. It might, oh, be, it might be, yeah, it might be our joint show that is the 50th anniversary of doing seven days a week. Oh, my um, gosh. So, but just going back on point with the, uh, just just so people are clear, we are talking systems. We're not talking SOPs. The SOPs belong as part of the system. They're part of the protocols that make the cog run inside. But you have to have an external system first before you can write the SOPs for each of those systems. Is that right? Essentially, a system is kind of the hierarchy, the, yep. the roadmap of the SOPs that might live down below. Yes. Right. So yeah. you start at the top of a system and you go, I need a, you know, I have a finance department. I need a mm -hmm. financial system. I'm mm -hmm. going to call it, you know, F I N dash whatever 100. And then, you know, that might be the top of your heap. And then you say, okay, well now I need a, a general ledger system. So I might call that uh, F I N, you know, dash 100 dash 10 or something. And you give yourself room to kind of numerically, and then you call that one general ledger, by the way. And then yeah. you might call the next one accounts receivable, accounts payable. But yeah. then at the very end of the system is where the, the real critical SOPs live. That's mm -hmm. where people live and breathe and say, okay, well, to, to get the result at the top we want, we've got to have the SOPs kind of at the end of the system. Makes sense. So we've come to the name it convention we've covered. Step number two is the result statement. I don't know what this is, so I'm looking to hear, looking to understand. What is the result statement? Do you want me to bring uh, this up on your screen? Uh, it's it's your call. It doesn't matter. Uh, I think we go. understand. Yeah, results. Yeah. So <laughs> I put on the, uh, the American Indian dream catcher to point out that we're actually not just wishing and hoping over here. Okay. Mm. We are trying to find a specific result. A system should not exist if there's no intended specific result. And this result should be uh, ideally quantifiable, Yeah. right? So you can't just say, well, I want our business to grow and, and you know, it's some little subsystem three levels deep in product launch. It's like, well, that's, that's not a good enough result. That system should have a specific input and a specific output. And that result is often overlooked. We, we start making systems and we start 
documenting things or we try to do our best to build a, a, a business, if you will, mm -hmm. but without quantifying those results and then deciding are those results even reasonable, we often get off on the wrong foot. And you, you brought, I thought, a very uh, salient point up earlier, which was there's some stuff you should not do. Right. And by putting this kind of systems mentality in place and then demanding a result up front, you can start going, you know what? We just don't do that anymore. Mm -hmm. um, there, there's a lot of stores in America now, by the way, uh, that say we're not going to take cash anymore. Yeah. We don't want your cash. Yeah. Now, I'm not sure if they're going to be able to sustain that in the U.S. because of uh, currency laws. And, you know, it basically says this is this money is good. But that is a reasonable thing to say. We don't want cash here. It's a pain. So no more systems for cash. Our our system is give us a credit card. That's yeah. our system. Yeah, it's the same as ours. And I, what do you know? What I always say to clients as a trade off when we we don't have a credit control department. I always say to clients the reason we can do this price and give you this through the agency is because we don't have a credit control department. If I have to employ someone to do credit control you're going to have to cover those costs. And I wouldn't want to put those costs onto you. And suddenly, obviously, the credit cards kind of appears from nowhere, whereas before they wanted to just pay. Do you see what I'm coming from? But that that's part of the design of the system. And so what you do is you look at it and you go, all right, what are the trade-offs here? What do you give back to the customer? Okay, no credit control department. You get a flat rate contract. There's no extra costs. You can add extra SKUs or whatever. You, does that make sense? So you're always working out that there's the counter argument to that. It's oh, well, I wanted to pay on. Yeah. It's really the perfect example of taking a, uh, we'll call it a weakness and turning it into a strength. We have some yeah. smaller companies and it's like, we don't have any interest in offering uh, terms, right? Payment terms. And yeah. with payment terms, you need that credit control or in the US, you might call it an accounts payable department. Yeah. They yeah. have to chase the money, right? Yeah. And then when they get the money, they got to account for it or they got to send bills. They're running reports. All yeah. of that stuff goes away by saying, we don't offer credit. And we pass the savings on to you, right? That yeah. that takes yeah. it from that, you know, oh, now I've got an objection from a customer into, hey, this works for me as a customer because I don't have to pay for these added layers of management and, and expense yeah. and, and so forth. Yeah, because it's got to come from somewhere at the end of the day. Okay, so desired results. Are we, what's the next slide from here? Are we still here? We're working on desired results. No, I think once okay. you state your result and, and you quantify the result, I'm sorry, it's not quite centered uh, for you. Right. It's uh yeah, it is what it is. So it's anyway, live. It's live. Yeah, it's all that's good. right. Yeah. Benchmarks yeah. are another thing that you need to really consider. So yeah. results are kind of the the high watermark of, you know, hey, I'm I want to launch this product and I want it to do ten thousand dollars a month in sales. That's that's kind of the result of, of a product launch sequence, for example. Maybe you don't you say I'm not gonna launch any product at mm. the at the top level of that product launch that can't hit ten thousand dollars. But some of the benchmarks that you need to put in place are where some of the intangibles come in. Yeah. For example, you might say, I'm not going to um, maintain or launch a product I don't think can have higher than four star rating on Amazon. Mm -hmm. Or I'm not going to launch a product that takes uh, 120 days of production time because the, the cash flow and the management of it is too complex. It's got to be 30 days or less or 60 days or less. So you have to have benchmarks that, that are both uh, they they quantify the nature of the the outcome that you want, and they give some parameters, almost like uh, what do they call those things on the side of the road that you don't drive off? Uh, barriers. Yeah, like a a, a a driving barrier. There's another word we use uh, in the U.S. I it's maybe we don't use it because I can't remember it. But the the point is to keep you from driving off the road. You got to put these little uh, guardrails. That's what they Guard, are. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The guardrails yeah. Um, in place. And that way you say, okay, well, I'm about to do this process. Oh, it doesn't work. It didn't hit this benchmark. It didn't hit that benchmark. And it takes the emotion out of a lot of these decisions. Hmm. Remember that all of us, it, it doesn't matter what part of your company you're working in or what part of your company your team works in. Everybody gets emotional about the things that they're doing. Hmm. You know, if it's product launch or if it's finance or marketing or what have you, Everybody has their their gut feel and their instincts, but this helps take the emotion away. And so I think it's really important to to get those benchmarks described early, and and that way you can have a philosophical alignment as well. Make sense? Makes sense. Cool. And next stage. Who okay. Is? So yeah, now we have to ask ourselves who's accountable, right? Yeah. Who who's got the job? Uh, you can see down here who who's accountable, but. 
if you don't have somebody who is responsible for the outcome, mm-hmm. then you don't have a system at the end mm-hmm. of the day. You just don't have a system. And I want people to think, even if they're the ones responsible out of the gates, again, as they hire people on that functional chart, they can figure out who's go- who are they going to assign this, this responsibility to. And I'll share a system here with you guys here in just a minute that will show you some of those uh, types of things that you need to track and accountability and so forth. But just the very simplest thing, here's the system name, here's kind of the, the general result we expect, and here's who's responsible for it can make all the difference in the world. And by the way, sometimes there's due dates. Uh, maybe it is, um, you know, this w- once this system is initiated, you have three days to deliver. Sometimes these are called service levels. But mm-hmm. internally, we have to have a predictable outcome, right? Both on terms of the result we want, quantifiable result, but also the timing. If you say, well, we're going to launch this product launch process and it's going to take, we don't know how long, like it, maybe it's three months, maybe it's three days. That's too much of a variable. Yeah, uh, Danny, maybe you agree with this, but I part of my objective with the system is to make things more predictable and mm. less chaotic. Yeah, yeah. So, and and that also means that anyone who understands if the system's been put in place, people can fit into the cog of that. It's been engineered and, and optimized for the next person coming in. So, ultimately, the, like you said, it controls the chaos or it, it does away with the chaos because people need to follow a line like. As entrepreneurs, we build the businesses, we have the vision for the businesses, but we need hands on the ground and people to take care of those systems in place. If you don't have a system, you don't have rules, it falls over. Yeah, that's totally right. And by the way, generally entrepreneurs are terrible at execution. Yeah. There, there's, you know, we can be really good at it for short periods of time. At least this is the case for me. You mm. know, I, I can be a, in the trenches and tactical for a short run a very yeah. short run, a sprint. But when it's a day-to-day marathon, uh, like the, the entire job is about those types of details, forget about it. I am the worst. I'm going to and- say this in the kindest way. <laughs> How dare in, you? In, in, no, in business, as entrepreneurs, you're exactly right. We get bored. We move on to other things. We want to see bigger picture and we want to see people. We want to tell people what's in our head and go, right, execute that and get feedback from our team and everything else. But ultimately, you're an entrepreneur or you're a safe pair of hands who can do that. I can't do safe hands. That's just not me. I can't run and do the same job every single day, get up at, you know, start at nine. I can't do that. But people need that kind of structure in their life and they're very good at it. And that's why you employ people to do those jobs. You put the right people in the right seats. Boy, I can't agree with you more. Uh, I'll say it in a much less nice way. If you suck at something, get somebody who's good at it. And and I honestly... I have people on my team who love to do what they do and I hate to do what they do and Mm -hmm. vice versa, by the way, every time I talk about, you know, I'm wheeling and dealing, I'm doing this or that. They're like, Oh, I would, I would hate that. Right. And Mm -hmm. so it's the perfect match. They do what they love. I do what I love. And that's when you really have the flywheel starting to turn because they're responsible for their systems. I'm hopefully not responsible for hardly anything, but I get to do what I want to do. That is when you really have a company that is starting to to find a liftoff. And in terms of your job or business owner, that is freedom as well. Being able to design something, hand that over to people. The only problem is, as you know, we have to go back and make sure these systems work. Sometimes we have to pull over the coals to go, why is that not working? So even though we're not hands on, we still have to have understanding of what is going on in order to work out who's doing what and where things are going wrong and where the ship's being steered. Because you still need to have that macro um, overview of what's going on in the business. Completely right. There. This is why we have the accountability uh, up front and you'll be able to run reports. You'll be able to, uh, frankly, when something breaks, it's really easy to kind of figure out what went wrong because mm-hmm. you just kind of track it back your little systems, uh, your tree of systems, if you will. And mm-hmm. it really is something. So we, we don't manage by abdication, right? This is a big mm-hmm. principle that was beat into me back in the nineties. We can't just say, um, listen, here's, here's an SOP. Don't call me. I'll call you. That's mm-hmm. not good management. If you're a terrible manager like me, then hire managers who are good managers. Yeah. And then when when you say manager, right, yeah. we're, we're talking about people management and then there's workflow and work on the ground. I don't think you're bad at managing people, human beings. 
like communication. Oh, you are. Yeah, I'm t- terrible. I mean, I'm right. I built skills, so I I, I can get by, and right. I, I don't have uh, legions of my team trying to overthrow the uh, worthless manager. But yeah. I, I'm I'm very upfront. Right. Like I'll give you a classic entrepreneurial conundrum or paradox. Yeah. Like I love my people. They, they yeah. uh, many of these people have been with me twenty plus years, ten years. Mm. This is these are people I care about and people I feel yeah. genuine affection for. Not just workplace camaraderie. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Okay. But it is it is very rare for me to call them up and say, "Hey, I just want to let you know you're doing a good job." You know, I noticed this thing that you did, and and I, I just want to let you know I appreciate it. When they get that call the the few times that ever happens it's it's like sending them just right over the the top of happiness right yeah. they tell their friends about it they tell their family sometimes we'll even issue certificates but that is a giant chore to me i can't remember it mm-hmm. and i just I, I say to myself mentally well they should know they're doing a good job because i didn't say they were doing a bad job but yeah. that's not how humans work and so mm-hmm. this is one of the things that makes me a terrible manager but is that because of the size of the team, the level you operate at? There is a lot of people to go around. If you've got smaller teams, it's easier to go. If you've got a team of 10 versus a team of 200, it's very much easier to speak to those t- team on, on a weekly, monthly basis and say, do you know what? You're doing a great job. I, I think it's not just the size of the team. It's honestly my own pre- predisposition to yeah. saying they're they're great. They must know they're great. It's kind of like uh, – you know, if you don't tell somebody how you feel, you don't tell somebody how things are going. By the way, if when things go bad, I don't go over the top and yell at them uh, either. either. Yeah. I, I definitely give very, very um, clear feedback like, hey, this is great. And and I'm, I'm a lot better at it now. So mm-hmm. my whole point is it doesn't matter the size of the team. It matters yeah. your skill set. It matters how committed you are to developing them as 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 team members, as humans, because mm-hmm. ultimately you want them to grow with the company. Yeah. The person doing data entry today, if they're doing data entry five years from now, you really haven't done your job as a leader to manage them and bring their skills up and help them progress in the world. That's what we need to do as leaders and managers. And I, you know, I'm, I'm not bad at it at this stage, but I'm certainly not as good as some of the managers that I bring in. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Uh, going to the next slide. So document system. Well, I met, I threw one in here, maybe. Uh, so I let me, let's just check our, our thing. So documenting the system. So this is part of the uh, required resource uh, that I'm going to jump into first. So this is one of the things I, I've got some raw material here on this slide, some yep. lumber, right? What do you need to get this job done? Yep. And it, it is so essential that you think about these things. You take for granted that you already have login to Seller Central. You already have login to fiber to whatever the the systems that are needed but all of those types of things need to be part of your your documentation and so think about all those required resources if they need a credit card to to perform this all of these things are really really important Hmm. and so required resources don't don't take it lightly make sure that you are really really good at this Makes sense. I'm going to say a couple of hellos, if that's all right, and some comments. So Owen says, whoa, come up to 50. It's been a blast. It's a bit like seller sessions on acid, he said, because of the seven days a week. <laughs> Abigail says, oh, I hear you loud and clear when we were talking about entrepreneurs earlier on in that um, they're different to having the hands on a daily basis. Owen says, delegate and empowerment gives your employees ownership of what they do. Thomas says, 100% same with remembering everyone's birthday special days to them. And then he followed up with, I'm rubbish at that. Uh, Join us in the feed is Sab's in the feed here. Herbie's back as well. Rob's here. Tomas here. Dom is here. Sean Dyson as well. Jason Chew's back. Sarah's here. Singh is here as well. Okay, next next step, Steve. Well, I love seeing everybody. And I just want to uh, uh, let Thomas know that, uh, A, I'm, I'm also not good. But our system, when we put employees and teammates in the system, it will help us remember their anniversary and birthdays. And I'll tell you, it's the greatest uh, help ever because they love to have those anniversaries, you know. And, and by the way, I'm still not good at it. We, we don't have everything done. We have multiple systems, so it's, it's not perfect. But when you remember and go, hey, you know, you've been with me. You know, I, I just I just brought somebody kind of back in. I sold a company. She stayed with that company for a while. She's just come back into the fold. And she started working with me in 1998. 
right? Wow. And and we talked about it. And that, that there's a there's a high level of kind of appreciation and affection between us. But I should put in the computer, and I, I may or may not have done this. That, that says, hey, her original start date was whatever, October 1st, 1998, so that we can talk about that anniversary annually. Those are really good uh, techniques. So I'm with you, Thomas. Okay. Excellent. Now we're, we're down to the actual KPIs. So hmm. system measurements. So when you measure a system, this is where you, the individual system must be measured. So at the top of the heap, you might uh, say, I'm going to, you know, maybe it's a sales tax uh, system. And you say, well, I'm going to make sure that we are not late on our sales tax and that our cost for um, managing the sales tax is below some certain percentage of revenue or, um, you know, whatever basis you want to make it. You, you define some kind of measurement to say, we got the system outcome. We, we maintain compliance of 100% or 95% if it's a fill rate on in your warehouse, whatever it is, and that you were able to do it at some cost basis that was reasonable. Yeah. This is a, a big deal to me. What, what do you think about that, Danny? Yeah, no, that everything's got to be measured. And like we said about a cost basis, we have to watch our numbers. Sometimes I'll be, I'll feel foul of that. Like my team will send me reports and as, it sounds really bad, but there are times where like I get the, I get weekend and month end reports across all three of the businesses. But sometimes I, I've got a feel for the numbers and they've spent all that time building me the reports and I don't look at them. I find that I need to look at them when, when there's a bit of chaos going on. Does that make sense? But do you, get, do you have a feel across all your business? You know where the numbers are sitting, right? You've got a gut reaction to them. And so I think the structure of having the numbers there that others are following to make sure they're on top of numbers and then notify me if I miss something. But generally, I should be better at that. No, no, that actually, I really love the way you're doing it. So mm. we, we have a general philosophy that if everything is within the norms of what mm. you expect within those guardrails we talked about earlier, yeah. then we don't need to get involved, right? The the, mm. the boss or whoever's responsible at the highest level, we shouldn't go in and try to interrupt and start asking questions because everything's mm. running nominal. Well, just think of it like a you're flying an airplane. Everything's in the green. Everything's fine. No, no loud noises, no red flashes. But the moment that something is above or below those mm. measurements or those those intended outcomes, now we need to get involved and we need mm. to say to ourselves, wait a minute, why do we have le red lights flashing? Sometimes we call this handle with human. If mm. the system isn't handling it, we need to get a human involved and figure out what's gone uh, wrong or right. By the way, sometimes you may exceed systems uh, of sales and you're like, our sales are up you know, twice as much as we expected. What's happening here? Mm you're not trying to put a stop to it to be clear you're trying to figure out what went right and really yeah. right and then replicate it and lean how do we double it. down yeah that's yeah. right yeah so i don't although i want people i think generally having benchmarks and having dashboards that show you kind of the nominal operation and a and a, a good system either weekly or daily like you know we look at our dashboards daily and we can see what's happening it, as long as everything's nominal then there's no problems but the moment you start seeing those red lights flashing on your dashboard, you got to get serious. Yeah. Uh, Herb's just come in here and said, in corporate America, we deal with call centers using KPI and employees only play to the KPA like closing a ticket in X amount of days, no matter what, because they will get in trouble. Have you seen these challenges in your business? I think he's referring to is people circumventing the system just to keep the numbers looking good. Yeah. So yes, Herb, I've seen every variation of that. And then some, uh, it's almost like when we create a system, then somebody finds a way to game the system. Uh, and, and you just kind of have to keep figuring out the, the, the guardrails to put in place, but th there's a fine line. And, and even a, for us, a predisposition to saying, we want it to be easier to operate the system than to operate outside the system. And so if, if your system is so onerous or so troublesome for people that they feel like they have to game it or there are such consequences for, for things happening, you, in my opinion, you, we have to really evaluate the, the rationale behind it and, and make sure that the things are aligned with our, our proper outcomes. For, in our call centers, for example, in the past we've used, you know, what's the average time on hold, average time in the queue, average time that somebody's talking uh, to a, a customer. 
So if if you have one person who and they're talking to customers for two minutes and everybody else is talking for for five minutes, let's say that two minute conversation, something's wrong, something's different there, right? Yeah. You can look at their sales results or return results or whatever the other things. The, the point is, however you decide to measure these things, just look at it. And like on those trouble tickets that Herb talked about, if they're closing the thing out, even if they didn't resolve it, there's going to be some kind of customer feedback at the end of that that says, hey, you didn't even fix my problem. That yeah. negative feedback will will cause that system to rectify itself if, if we get it right. Yeah, he's come back in and said, we eventually changed the message to be customer obsessed focus to employees. Do you want to elaborate on that? I think we understand what you mean because the, the, you haven't changed the metrics. You just told the team, you're right, you've got to be obsessed with customers. But what, what impact did that have on your business, Herb, when you made – because that's a statement. That's not a measurement if I'm getting this right. Yeah, agreed, Steve? You're I agree. Telling, I, yeah. I think it's a fine message, but I'm not yeah. sure how that will resolve the problem. I'd love to hear more. Yeah, so let us know about that. Um, next stage, Steve. Right, so we defined system measurements, yep. So it, now we're measuring stuff, and now we have to think about standards. So yeah. what's the difference between the measurements and the standards, people might ask? And so standards are the things like, um, you know, we want you uh, – let's use the call center environment that Herb talked about. Let's say everybody's averaging that, that three minutes on a phone call, and they're making the sale, and everybody's fine. Uh, we want that to be a reasonable standard to live by. But for example, if somebody can make the sale in two minutes, that doesn't necessarily mean the customer experience is better. Our mm -hmm. standard, for example, in that case is we want the customers to feel delighted at the end of the thing. So when they get that little uh, review thing that they have a feeling of satisfaction, five-star delight, or uh, the most, to me, the most uh, practical way to measure customers is to see whether they would recommend you to a friend, hmm. right? This is the number one, for, don't ask them how satisfied, I think asking for stars is good for all the reasons we know, but mm -hmm. asking them if they would refer you to a friend or family member is the most highest predictable uh, discovery point, data point, if mm -hmm. you are doing a good job. And so those standards, like we want to maintain this standard of customer um, uh, referrals uh, or the, uh, there is a term for this so that's escaping me, but having those those general business standards, like we're not going to do the wrong thing, right? If a customer calls and yells at us, um, you know, and demands us do something outside of our standards, we have to say no to that. Even if we lose the customer, that's okay because we have our standards. So this is, this is like a, a moral compass. Yeah. Here's our, our company values. Here's what we believe. And we won't violate those standards. Does that make sense to you? Totally. Totally. Much Next more step. intangible than the, uh, the, the system measurements, just to be clear. Yeah. So now that you have all the data endpoints, now is the point where you can really put it down on the documents. And you, it's, it's not so hard. You just start at the top and you're like, here's the name. And then you write the result statement. And then you start writing you know, some of the inputs required. And you just kind of go down that list. It's not, it's not complicated, but it is overwhelming when you start going, I'm just writing one system and this took me an hour or a half an hour or two hours. Um, and then you, your brain has the mushroom cloud uh, reaction, which is, you know, it just imagine that, that nuclear explosion. It starts out like this. I'm going to get systems and I'm really committed this time. And then you get up into the mushroom cloud and you can forget about it, right? There's 0% chance you have of seeing your way through that thing. And so I just want to tell you, it's the one byte at a time, just one system at a time. And once you get a, enough of these, four, five, ten of these done, and you feel good about it, then you teach your team how to do it for the stuff they're doing. Yeah. It's it absolutely is something you can delegate. Excellent. Yes. Um, right, so let me quick, give you a couple examples uh, when you're ready. Yeah. Now I was just going to ask you, uh, but you kind of covered it. Is that the over, the mushroom is the overwhelm? Well, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's cool. We covered that. So next one, sales tax process. I don't like sales tax. None yeah, of us fine. do. We all hate <laughs> yeah. it. Uh, but yeah. here's, uh, here's a clear example of how you just kind of diagram a, a system and, and carry on. It doesn't have to be pretty like this. Uh, but just you, like, all right, we need a sales tax process. So we start here. What's our mm -hmm. result? We're going to comply with the sales tax requirements. Um, and what does that mean? What are the components of that? That means we have to collect taxes, remit taxes, and then let's minimize the financial compliance burden, right? This is, this is kind of the, 
the uh, benchmarks and and so forth that we want. So desired results, benchmarks, who's accountable? Director of finance right there. Um, you know, what are the required resources? Well, we got to have legal opinions. We got to have software. We've got to have all of these other things that are in here. And uh, and then there are standards, you know, that we have to comply uh, with audit rates and, and uh, burdens and so forth. All of this stuff is just clear. And then we put some notes down here to make sure we get that in the document that says, hey, we have both federal and state issues. We've got to have experts on staff uh, or at least resources, external resources we can rely on. That's just a, a clear example of a sales tax system kind of from beginning to end. This is the overview. It's not the, the weeds of it, right? The SOPs live down below in the review and remit process. That's a separate process. This is where you're going to have the SOP. How do you review the sales tax for the month? And then how do you send that tax to the appropriate state government? Does that make yeah, sense to you? Totally. So just, just for making this easy, here's what you do, right? You start at the top, you name it, go through all the steps we just talked about, and then you document it. It's, it's just that simple. And to translate that, I showed you the sales tax process. We start, we hmm. comply, we collect, who's accountable, blah, blah, blah. It's, it all is very, very simple at the end of the day. So, you know, I'm, I'm kind of going through this stuff. But that's really all there is to it when it, yeah. when it comes right down to it. I, I can show you one other thing. Let me share a different screen here, mm -hmm. uh, Danny. The, and this is kind of a project management view. So I showed you kind of a, a graphical view, but I'm going to show you a project management view. And forgive me if my computer's slowing down. It's, uh, it's old, like me. Application window. All right. I think this is the one. Okay. Here you go. Okay. So uh, people don't like sales tax. So let's look at product launch. They must like mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, so when you launch a product that it has a series of tasks. So this is a kind of a project management view. First, you got to create your SKU. Then you get a UPC. We add that item to what we call our master database. Hmm. Um, and and by the way, each of these, if we click into it, there's more details. This is just kind of the overview. Is this what what program is this, Steve? This is an internal program that you built, or this is yeah, this is parsimony. This is uh, the thing that we. I think we even give away the project management stuff free. By the way, right. so uh, parsimony.com has lots of free stuff. Uh, of course, there's some upgrade paths that we want to get people's money to pay for hmm. all this stuff, but yeah. it. Everything that I do, I really try to talk about in a practical, real terms basis, right? Very, very little of this is ethereal. And it's yeah. like, well, it would be nice to have a philosophy talking about if a tree falls in the woods, does it make a sound? It's like, no, I can need the product launch and I need to make it happen now. And every single one of these phases has a, a task. We can define who's responsible for it. There's timelines. We can put charts and responsibilities. Every little piece of it is highly easy to predict. And if you dive into one, and again, this is just a test one because we can't give away our secret stuff, hmm. uh, but we can see who's working on it. We can see any details that would be for the task. We can check timelines, comments. Um, every little part of this is really, really integrated. And that's what you need to manage. And it doesn't matter to me what you use. I just like the fact that we can keep track of people's time at the task level. We can, they can turn in expenses at the project level. We can actually turn in and do, uh, oh, now you get to see, Oh, this gives you a really good view. Huh? <laughs> Look at all that. Um, you can see all of these things with all these comments. Um, and you, you can see purchase orders. You can see all kinds of things baked into the system. My point <laughs> is when it's really, really, um, integrated and, and mm. part of something, you can do some special things. And that's, you know, we practice what we preach over here, not mm. perfectly every time, but we certainly give it our, our best. What percentage of your team are operating on this level with inside the product man uh, project management software? I've lost your well, audio. Uh, about, a, about 100%. Uh, so one of the yeah. things that we do is that you know, inside inside a uh, system, you can have the, uh, you know, who it's assigned to, attachments. Yep. But one of the most important things, and this is something I love, 
we can email from inside the system that's and what it's going to ask it. you yeah. yeah yeah that's what i was going to ask you if everyone's on that system and the use of email how are you con collating that information so that makes sense so the even, whole team in is in there yeah even more we avoid email where we can hmm. so all of this is not an email this is just an internal comment yeah. right so they they put at jessica at sherry at steve and those pop up in our little system to say hey you were mentioned in this project or whatever uh, we also have gamified it, by the way, who gets points for adding a, a project or a comment or whatever so that they, they their score runs up. Yeah. So that makes sense. Uh, I don't know if my screen is sharing or if I'm locking yeah, up yeah. on you. I've still got your screen. Are you we're going to come off this screen? You done uh, with this bit? It's OK. Yeah, you can you can yeah. come off it now. The, the point is we want to gamify it to whatever level we can. We want to integrate it to whatever level we can. And we have internal chats and things like that. Yeah. My point is. Don't feel overwhelmed. Just start with one and work your way through. Cool. Uh, we've got your screen is frozen at the moment, but I'll read out some of your comments. Uh, so I don't know if you just turn your camera on and off and that might work. Okay. Uh, Thomas, he says, really pleased Steve mentioned the overload of writing system procedures currently going through this. And it does feel like there isn't an end, but you know, it will be worth it in the end. Troy says, this is awesome. When you had the slides up on the screen, Kwasim is back saying, hello, uh, Steve and Danny, happy to take uh, any questions in the comments. Are we covered all the, st the slides there, Steve? We've pretty much gone through. We have, yeah. We've yeah, definitely design gone system, through the thing. Established standards, required resources, design system and measurement. Yeah, just want to make sure we covered everything. Um, just a quick one on COVID. Um, I don't know what, what's going on in the US if you've – oh, we've lost Steve. But I'll just let the audience know at the moment we've got an announcement here in the UK. So we are – lockdown another three weeks so me opening my big mouth and saying that we're going to do seller sessions live seven days a week you're stuck with me now for another three weeks until that changes so anyone in the comments if you want me to carry on going happy to do so as long as you're enjoying the show and you're getting as much as you can out the content i will also look at doing a 50th celebration next week uh and bring Steve and a few of the, the other regular guys on. So I was just saying to the audience when you popped out, Steve, uh, in the UK here, we've extended lockdown for another three weeks. So I said they're stuck with me. Mm. What, what's going on in the US on your end? Well, I, you know, I, I think it, it varies by state. Uh, my computer may be running slow, by the way, everybody. My apologies. Yeah. Uh, but I can tell you that it's it's it varies by state. I, I would say, you know, lockdown or not lockdown, People are going to use their brain. They have good common sense. Mm. Um, you know, at the end of the day, we now have more data and we can make good decisions about what needs to happen with this thing. It's impossible to stay locked down forever, right? Mm. So the lockdowns will end at some point. You can't yeah. test everyone. So that's out. And our, our politicians are such, um, I don't know, wishy-washy, uh, useless individuals that they want to do whatever is going to play – you know, the safest and, and the, the least risk. And so uh, my guess is that people, I, I can tell you this, mm. uh, I, I have a, a badge, uh, it's in my car right now, but I'm, I'm an essential worker, right? I, I have to work around and, and we're importing stuff and a lot of PPE. So I have a, a, a federal badge that allows me to go anywhere and do pretty much anything. That's right, it's a license to kill. And uh, <laughs> the the objective is, uh, or the, my point of the story is that, you know, three weeks ago, four weeks ago, there was nobody on the roads. I mean, mm. it was me and, you know, nothing. Yeah. And yesterday I was out going from warehouse to warehouse and it was packed. And so it's, you know, no matter what the government says, people aren't going to stay in their houses forever. And so mm. uh, it, it's going to change. And and by the way, this is a natural evolution. It'll It'll be fine. It'll work itself out. Yeah, definitely. Uh, a few comments here. I asked if we'd carry on. And yeah, Thomas says 100% carry on. Annalise says, yes, please continue. Elchin says, please continue. Juan says, yeah, Danny, go forward. I love your show. Well, it's about the guests as well. So thank you. But the content comes from the guests. So let's make it clear. I ask the questions. They deliver on the content. I couldn't write and deliver all this content. I don't have the expertise in a lot of these areas. So I bring in who I find to be the best in the game. Uh, Cindy says, Danny, this is a huge commitment from you, but the content you bring is awesome and so much appreciated. Thank you so much, Cindy. I appreciate you and we appreciate you too. Um, Steve, what podcast number will this come out on Awesomers? Uh, 
So this will be number 185 if I'm doing my math right. So awesomers.com slash 185 will be published. And I'll probably even put some of these slides up, uh, little, the graphics, if I yeah. can uh, tell yeah, you that for me and find the time. Uh, we are behind because we are all hands on deck. Makes sense. Uh, guys, can you make sure you go to subscribe? You can all the, all the uh, pod catchers, if you like. So you're on iTunes. Uh, you're on um, what's the uh, Android-based systems as well. There's a multitude of podcast uh, pod catchers, as they call them out there. So make sure that you go and subscribe to Steve's show and go back through a lot of the origin stories and the history. Uh, he's got a lot of content, which is we call evergreen content. So you can obviously go back, dip in, and get good advice that hasn't dated because they're they're generally general business areas as well uh so steve and i will be back of course uh next week um on friday but he may join us on, he's so busy but he may join us on thursday or wednesday i've got to work out the 50th day and then i'll put a post out about that tomorrow we've got woman of amazon in depth with michelle venton talking about how she went from zero to eight figures and then exited last year for seven figures whilst raising a young family and taking care of a mum with mental health. And then on Sunday, we've got Mindset Sunday, Law of Attraction and Pay It Forward with Lee Rand Hirschkorn in the comments here. Jamie says, thank you, gents. What was the name of the system Steve created and was using? Another three weeks of no sleep. Great work, Danny. So he's talking <laughs> about the system that you're using internally in-house. Do you want to give him the... Name. Yeah, parsimony.com, P-A-R-S-I-M-O-N-Y.com. Uh, by the way, parsimony means doing more with less to us. That's that's what we do. Uh, yeah. And I do want to just uh, point out to everybody, Danny is sacrificing his life, right, for entrepreneurs. Th this is a extraordinarily difficult thing. He downplays it because Danny's Danny, right, and he wants to be a, a very modest guy, but this is a, a yeoman's amount of work. So I've just done the math on how many views that we get and how many views I've seen other shows get. And you guys are not doing your part to go leave him a review on Seller Sessions. Get on there. Leave him a five-star review. This helps it rank in, in the various mm -hmm. platforms, including Apple iTunes. And yeah. leave, him, leave him those comments and reviews because that helps motivate folks like Danny and myself. Am I right, Danny? Yeah, yeah, no, it's always great to get good feedback. I mean, I've always been open with downloads. We hit about 50,000 downloads a month now. We normally do between 35,000 and 40,000 downloads a month. But since doing the seven days a week, that's gone up to 50,000. Obviously, it's a replay off of here. So, yeah, numbers are, numbers are climbing. But for me, like, I've always tried to be hyper-targeted to, uh, like, the grown-up audience, as I like to call it, right? I'd rather have people that are like, Yes, this show is about that advanced level of Amazon stuff. It's like it's the grown up show that you go to because there's everyone who's got like the, the beginners and they do brilliant with that. But, I, you know, eventually I know that the beginners will get their education elsewhere and then finally they land at seller sessions. And that's our goal is to be like do as much as the advanced stuff for more like the business owners. And this is why Steve like. This is much more mature content. On a Friday when we talk to you, like you, you've you done hundreds of millions in sales. You're like a unicorn within our industry. And the fact that you come on and share that at that level it inspires other people to reach the same heights as you. Well, yeah, it's kind of you to say I do this for the same reason you do it. I yeah. love entrepreneurs and, and not like I love nachos, right? People go, oh, I love nachos, right? That's not how I love entrepreneurs. I love entrepreneurs. I want to see people succeed. And I know you have the same values uh, when it comes to seeing entrepreneurs succeed. There's yeah. genuine fulfillment. Yeah. Not not a, oh, that guy, he got lucky, or, you know, or, oh, that gal, you know, she got a couple breaks or whatever. No, mm -hmm. it's like, holy crap, they're amazing. I like to be around them because they're, as yeah. I like to say, awesome, not just awesome, but awesomer. And, yeah. and we, this is, it's a true passion for myself and, and I think for Danny as well. So uh, I, I really uh, applaud what you're doing and, and I thank, thank you, you personally for doing it as well. No, thank you. I mean, for me, uh, Sunday, when we do Mindset Sunday, we're doing Law of Attraction. I know people see that fluffy and stuff like that and uh, what I call pay it forward. And I'd like to articulate that in much more detail. So anyone listening now, check in on Sunday. And I always try, like I call what you do, Steve, and what I do, we pay it forward. 
but I'll go into more graphic detail what that means, how the mechanics work of it, how it breaks down, and what are the like what we call the returns from it. Do you know what I mean? Because I don't do things to then put someone's name in the spreadsheet to say you owe me a favor. Paying it forward isn't about that. It's but it is part of a culture that you do, and hopefully that in that in enables others to do the same thing. Well, I, I love that. Uh, I'm for bonus content. I will show you guys next week the spreadsheet that I have with all the people that owe me favors. Yeah, that's a cool. Joke. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Michael says, I like the grown up show. Keep up the great work. Would you mind posting a link to where we can give you a review for your efforts, Danny? I, for one, would love to support the show with a review if that helps. Um, you can you can post it wherever podcatcher you're on. iTunes is great because that's our biggest market of all of them. So if you've got an iPhone and you're on iTunes, just go to do a search for Amazon FBA or uh, Seller Sessions and you'll find this and leave a review there. That would be amazing. On that note, everyone's making me emotional. I think it's time to uh, to get <laughs> off now and um, and I'll see you again next week. What's the best way people can reach you, Steve, through the uh, Empowery? What's the best way? Yeah, I think, um, you know, you can go to the Empowery Cooperatives, empowery.coop, uh, or you can uh, go to awesomers.com. You can find me on Facebook, LinkedIn. I'm not easy to get to directly, I'll be honest with you. Yeah. Uh, but when people find me, I try to respond as often as I can. And uh, I do love entrepreneurs. So if it is like, hey, can you give me a product that I can sell? I'm not going to respond to that. But mm -hmm. if it's like, hey, uh, I have this idea, I have this question, uh, I try to get to those when I can. Excellent. On that note, Stay home, stay safe, much love, take care of your family, and I'll be back here tomorrow, 4 p.m. as usual. Take care. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.